Hey, what is up everybody? So this channel started as a very, very pure math kind of channel and obviously we've migrated more into data science. But when I get the opportunity to talk about a topic that's kind of at the intersection of both, where we're gonna start by just solving this really cool integral that seemingly has no connection to anything, but the way we solve it is so counterintuitive, making it my favorite integral to solve that I've ever done. And if we're able to somehow link that to the data science world, you better bet I'm going to take the opportunity to explain that to you all. So we're gonna just start with that integral and ask if you saw this in your calculus course, how would you think about solving that? I am one of those nerds who does just like solving interesting integrals, and hopefully you are too. So here's our integral. It's gonna be the integral from negative to positive infinity of e to the power of negative x squared dx. So a lot of things we're familiar with in terms of integration. We have x squared, we know how to do polynomial integrals. We have e, we know how to do e to the power of something integral. So this seems kind of manageable at first glance. So my first try would be some kind of u substitution because I know how to solve e to the power of x, but this is e to the power of some function of x. So let's go ahead and just set u, this new variable u equal to that function of x. So u is equal to negative x squared. Now, as we do in u substitution, we do du dx, and we find that du is equal to negative 2x dx. That's just me differentiating this function of x. And then we rearrange this a little bit, and we get that dx is equal to negative 1 divided by 2x times du. So now we have all the pieces in place to try and rewrite this integral in terms of u and see if that helps us solve it. So we're going to basically get the bounds stay the same, because if you plug in negative or positive infinity in x here, you get the same exact bounds for u, so that's all fine. Now we have e to the u, so that part definitely got simpler. It looks like we're headed somewhere. And then we go ahead and put in dx as this form right here. And what we eventually find is that the integral quote unquote simplifies to this, which is the negative integral from negative infinity to positive infinity e to the u uh, times one divided by two square root negative u. This does not seem great. And so we're gonna say this is not great. So it doesn't seem like we made it any simpler. In fact, I would argue we made it more complicated. And so this route doesn't seem to work. And in fact, any of the major techniques that you try don't really seem to lead you anywhere in terms of this integral. What does work, what does start leading us somewhere is a very, very counterintuitive thing. And I couldn't even necessarily find a way to motivate this in terms of, hey, what if we tried this because of something about the form of this integral? It really does seem to come out of nowhere, which really goes against everything that I teach on this channel about let's try things based on some evidence that we have. But this one time here, you're gonna to have to take my word for doing this really counterintuitive thing that initially makes this integral way more complicated is actually gonna bring us to a place where we can solve this very elegantly and very beautifully. And that counterintuitive thing is that if we call this integral, capital I, we're going to square the integral. If we square the integral, we're basically just writing it twice here I wrote it in terms of x, and here I wrote it in terms of just some new variable y. And now we have two of these intractable integrals multiplied together, so how is this going to make it any better? We're gonna put that in terms of a double integral, and what we get is two integrals on the outside, both going from negative to positive infinity. This e to the negative x squared times e to the negative y squared, we can combine using the rules of exponentiation. We get e to the negative x squared plus y squared, and then we get dx dy. At this point is the peak confusion that you're probably having and that I had when I first saw the solution to this integral. This does not seem any simpler. It starts getting simpler, however, when we change our perspective, very literally. We're going to change the coordinate system that we're working in from Cartesian coordinates, who are in terms of x and y, to polar coordinates. Yes, your old friend polar coordinates from who knows way back when, algebra who defines the same space, the R2 space, in terms of a radius and an angle, an R and a theta. And just a quick refresher on how that works, if we have a point who is determined by these Cartesian coordinates x, y, we know that, you go over x and you go up y, so that's the point x, y. How do you define that point in terms of R theta? Well, it's going to be the radius from the origin is the R, and the angle theta formed by this part of the x-axis is going to be the angle you go in order to get to that point. So any point you can define with x, y, you can define with an r and a theta as well because it says what's the angle I go to and then how far do I go in that direction. So all points are equally represented in both 
uh, spaces. Now, what's the language we use to communicate between these two spaces? Well, x squared plus y squared, this is just Pythagorean theorem for you all, x squared plus y squared, this is a right angle right here, is going to be the hypotenuse squared, and the hypotenuse is going to be r, so x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And this other part is going to be something that you probably learned way back when, it's probably not going to seem familiar to you. If you want a proof of why this is true, it's not too complicated, and if you want, please ask in the comments below, and I can provide that for you all. But dx dy, in other words, a small infinitesimal area of this space in terms of the xy coordinate space is equally represented in the r theta space as r times dr times d theta. So it's almost like dx dy is dr d theta, but this extra piece r, and that comes from the fact that the r theta space has curvature to it and the xy space is more grid-like, it's more square, and this is the factor we use to deal with that. Again, pretty easy to show this for yourself, but let me know if you want a more formal proof of that. Now, believe it or not, by converting the language of x and y's to r's and thetas, we have everything we need to actually take this more complex thing that we've created into a thing that we can actually solve. And you can start seeing that because this x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Why did we do that? Well, because that's exactly what we see here. This dx dy equals r dr d theta. Why do we do that? Well, because that's exactly what we see here. So we can substitute r squared here and we can substitute this r dr d theta here. And you'll see that when we do that on this next page here, we start getting somewhere. So that integral, that i squared actually, is now written as this double integral of r times e to the negative r squared dr d theta. And quickly, how did we do that? Well, initially it was e to the negative x squared plus y squared. We know that's actually e to the negative r squared. And then we had a dx dy, which is r times dr d theta. The last thing, which I haven't completed here, is what are the new bounds? What are the bounds before? It was x goes from negative to positive infinity and y goes from negative to positive infinity. So we're going over the entirety. We were going over the entirety of the r2 space. How do you go over the entirety of the R2 space in polar coordinates? Well, that's gonna be all possible radii. So R is gonna go from zero, from just next to the origin, to infinity, so all the way out, infinitely, an infinite radius. And then what is theta gonna be? That's gonna be going from an angle of zero with the positive x-axis, to all the way around the circle, and we're talking about radians here, so this is gonna be two pi. So now we have the integral we're trying to solve, and you can see it already looks a little bit simpler and maybe something we can solve. One big thing that we've simplified is that if you look at this inner integral right here, everything that I've bracketed is just in terms of r. There's no thetas in there. So we're safe to just take this last part, d theta, and just pull that out into its own integral. This is a very trivial integral, folks. It's basically just saying the integral of one from zero to two pi of d theta. And so that's something that we can just work out right here that's just going to be 2 pi. So we already know the value of that first integral. The second one takes a little bit more work, but you're going to see that the failed u substitution that we did before is actually going to work now. And so we're going to say that u, we're going to define this u is equal to negative r squared. That means that du is equal to negative 2r dr. We're arranging that. We're going to see that dr is equal to negative 1 half times du over r. And now that all works out for us because doing all the substitutions, we're going to plug in e to the u, because remember u is equal to negative r squared. And then dr is equal to negative one half, which we pulled out into the front here, times du divided by r. And that du divided by r actually cancels very nicely with the r that's already hanging out here. So that finally what we're left with is that we find that this part of the integral here actually simplifies nicely to negative one half, the integral of eu du. And what are the bounds? Well, if you put in zero into this u function, that's just zero. If you put in infinity into this u function, that's negative infinity. And so that's how we get the bounds here. This is a very easy integral. It's just the integral of e to the power of something. We know that the antiderivative there is just e to the power of something. We put in the bounds, we work through the algebra here, and we get positive one half. And now we have positive one half for this integral, we have two pi for this integral, so we're just gonna multiply those together and we get pi, get pi. And the last thing to remember is that this was the original integral squared, okay? This was the original integral squared. And so the integral itself would therefore equal the square root of pi. And that 
is the solution to our integral. There's three big kind of like woe moments for me while solving this integral. One is that this u substitution that failed before works out very well later once we've framed the problem in the right way. Speaking of framing the problem in the right way, another woe moment for me is this switch from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates, which is not something I ever would have thought of, but that really unlocked the ability for us to solve this problem. And the third woe moment is just the idea of even squaring the integral in the first place. The idea of taking some kind of math problem and making it more complicated actually helps us solve that original math problem, which is so counterintuitive, but so cool to me. So hopefully those of you who just geek out over solving interesting integrals kind of have that itch satisfied. Those of you who are more into it for the data science, how does this have anything to do with data science? Well, to understand that, I would recommend that you do something that we should have done in the very beginning, and I purposely didn't do because I wanted to show this aha moment here. But if you're solving any integral going forward, please, please plot the function because it's just going to help you make sense of things. If we plotted the initial thing that we're trying to integrate, e to the negative x squared, it looks like this. What does that look like to you? To me, it looks like a bell curve, otherwise known as the normal PDF, otherwise known as the normal distributions PDF. In fact, folks, in fact, the normal distribution, in this case, just keeping it simple, the standard normal distribution with mean zero and variance or standard deviation one has its PDF equal to something that looks remarkably similar to this arbitrary integral we were trying to solve in this video. The PDF there is one divided by squared of two pi e to the negative x squared divided by two. And now let's say we're trying to do something in one of our intro data science or statistics courses around proving that the area under the standard normal PDF integrates to one, proving that it's a valid PDF. If we wanted to prove that, we would take the integral of this PDF from negative infinity to positive infinity for x, and we would get this integral, which we just need to do a little bit of work to use our previous result very nicely here. And that work is just another u substitution where we set u equal to x divided by square root of two, making du dx equals one over radical two. And if we rearrange that, dx is equal to square root of two du. And that helps us because now if we pull this integral down, then dx is gonna be square root of two. That gets pulled out in the front here. And then we have du. And then we just have e to the power of negative u squared because u squared is x squared over two, which is exactly what you see right there. So this integral here is literally the integral that we were trying to solve through this entire video. And now we know the answer to that is the square root of pi. So we go ahead and plug in square root of pi for this integral right here. And then these radical twos cancel out and then the square root of pi cancels out with the square root of pi in the denominator. And we find that one is the answer to the area under this curve, making this a perfectly valid probability density function and all is right with the world. So hopefully you found this video kind of interesting just for the pure awesomeness of solving this interesting integral. But also, if you care more about applications too, how does the fact that we solve this integral in this cool way actually help us to derive facts about the data science world? And this is just one example of that, but trust me folks, if you're working with any kind of normal probability density functions or trying to derive any kind of results, expected values, variances, stuff like that, this type, this form of integral, this e to the negative x squared, comes up all the time. So hopefully you like this video. Please leave a like and subscribe in the section below if you did. Any comments are always welcome and I'll see all you wonderful people next time.